think that Russian propaganda is a new problem. That's just because you haven't been paying attention. Um, partly because we saw much of this in the Soviet era. Um, it goes back to the, I think, to the birth of the Soviet regime, the contempt for truth, the belief that you can use information as a political weapon. The use of the internet as a tool of mass communication is also not exactly new. Um, Russians have been using that for a long time. I came across, I think, a particularly conspicuous example in Transnistria in 2007, which was a good, um, good 10 years ago, when the Russians had set up a fake think tank which produced fake and very convincing looking reports and then used this to try and propagate the idea that Transnistria was not only a real country but also one that deserved international recognition. Another reason why I think fake news is a misleading term is that there's no, it's very hard to define what fake news really is. I think now it's used as an epithet by politicians and people generally for any news they don't like. It may be accurate, but selective. It may be invented. It may be somewhere in between. It may just have an analytical spin that they don't like. It doesn't matter. Use the term fake news. I mean, if you really get into the weeds on this and analyse a story very, very thoroughly, you can start saying this fact is wrong, this fact is wrong, this is taken out of context. And in a very detailed, sort of rather grinding way, you may be able to say this doesn't meet some standard of journalism. Um, but if you're trying to analyse content, content in any kind of real time, on any sort of mass basis, I think trying to decide whether something is fake news or not is, um, is basically impossible. Um, and it's, um, you'll get completely tied up in not doing it. That doesn't mean that the struggle is hopeless. It just means we have to attack the problem from a different direction. So I'm a very big believer in not looking um, in detail at the content, but looking in detail at the platform. And there are all sorts of tests that you can apply. I think the most important one is the question of realness. Is this a real platform? Is it a real social media account? Is there a real person there? Does it have a street address? Does it have a phone? Look and see, do they have advertising? Um, if you are in the media business, on the whole, you're probably trying to make money. If you don't have any adverts, that's already quite surprising. If there are names on the website, you know, supposedly journalists, well, it's a good idea just to Google this. There's a second factor, which is the question of good faith. Is this um, site operating um, according to kind of recognisable principles for integrity? Um, is there any sign that this website has ever admitted to making a mistake? Have they ever published a correction, a clarification, or an apology? And the problem is that fake news is just one of many, many tactics in this Kremlin arsenal, which are being deployed against us. And I think before we decide to focus on fake news, we should ask, is fake news actually the most important thing? Maybe it may well turn out, because we've never really measured this in any way the country, at least not the publication, maybe this stuff doesn't really have any impact. Maybe RT is just a vast muscular operation. It's vast camouflage. It's designed to suck all our effort up. So we sit there watching RT and thinking, ooh, isn't that nasty? What we should be worried about is what Russia is doing in the city of London. In 1991, we did not have Russian tra tanks crunching their way through the streets of London, swiveling their gun turrets and pointing the guns at the Bank of England and saying, open your financial system to our dirty money or we open fire. That really didn't happen. No, we did that to ourselves. We decided Russia isn't a threat anymore. The, the, perhaps the biggest effect of fake news, so-called, is not actually in changing our changing the way we vote or um, changing the sort of, the, 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 the sort of political decision making in a sort of technical sense. What it does is make us think that we were, were up against this really, really powerful enemy. And we, are, we, are, we are not. Russia is not a superpower in economic terms, it's not a superpower in population terms. It's a superpower in topographical terms, it's so big. It's a cryptographic superpower, it's a cultural superpower, we should never forget that on the positive side. Um, and it's a to some extent, it's an information superpower. They have an amazing ability to get their story across. So most of the things that Russia is exploiting, I would argue, are not so much an example of Russia being strong. They're an example of us being weak. And the answer for us being weak is for us to stop being weak. And that is not really a question of means, because we are so much bigger and stronger and richer than Russia. 
it's a question of coordination and we're part of that more than anything else lies in our hands. So next time someone says fake news to you, say that is actually a fake term and here's why. Good, let's look for the Thank you very much.